These are the steps Dorothea Rubaca. She ended up dismembering people in this house and burying them on the side yard. I used to be a very good person at one time. This is one of the most infamous houses in California true crime history. This is Dorothea Puente's boarding house, the grandma of death. Welcome to the Something or Other Tour. We're in Sacramento, California, and this is the boarding house of death. In the 1980s, this place became infamous. This was the house of Dorothea Puente. She was a con artist, she was a schemer, scammer, and she eventually became a murderer. She ran a boarding house here and preyed on elderly and disabled victims that were staying here. She ended up scamming them out of money, and then she murdered a handful of them and buried them in the backyard behind this place. The morbid side of me really enjoys this kind of stuff. I love true crime stuff. When you really put your mind there, it's pretty creepy. And this house has seen some pretty crazy stuff. It's like if these walls could talk scenario. The people staying here, a lot of them were vulnerable. They were disabled or they were elderly. Dorothea would end up taking over the accounts of those staying with her. This is how she would begin to siphon off their money. She basically offered up her financial help and took advantage. Just start scamming them out of like any sort of welfare, government assistance, or social security. And then she would fill out their paperwork and write letters to the family. As if it was them. So she would still run the con after they were long dead and continue receiving money. And it came to the point where she would end up drugging them until they were basically completely passed out. And then killing them, dismembering them somewhere near the back of the house, I believe, and then burying them in the backyard which was pretty insane for an older lady, you know, an elderly lady to pull off. But she actually wasn't as old as she looked. That was part of her scam. And it turned out when they investigated her that she had a history of running cons, running scams. She had different personas. She went by different names. Really crazy history before she started just murdering people. Dorothea had previous arrests for forgery, prostitution, operating a brothel, and drugging and robbing victims that she would pick up at a bar. She was a little older, but the thing is she played up her age. She tried to make herself look older than she actually was so that she could get away with more stuff because it's like, oh, I'm just a little old lady, which made this case super popular and infamous with true crime enthusiasts and just with the general public. Part of her grift was the character that she portrayed. She told people she was wealthy and just wanted to help. She was involved in charity and local politics. She was generous with food she offered and she acted as sweet and innocent as could be. After she committed the murder, she would still continue to run the scam to get the money from the victims, going as far as to talk to their families and say, oh, they're fine, they're just on a trip, or they're not around, or... Is she angry? I think so, dude. Uh, okay. We can, uh... I don't know. I don't know if she is or not. Investigators were tipped off when a mentally ill man named Bert Montoya was reported missing by a social worker named Judy Moises. While Judy was trying to find Mr. Montoya, another resident mentioned to her that Dorothea had been digging a lot of holes in the yard. Her victims were found buried in a garden that was right back here. This was grass and there was a garden back there. That's where she buried them. So crazy. Investigators ended up finding seven bodies buried in her yard. All in all, they believe that she killed at least nine people. The seven in her yard, a previous boyfriend that was dumped by a river, and a woman named Ruth Monroe that she became friends with and eventual business partners before killing her and taking every valuable she could take. Ultimately, she was only convicted of three murders. Right down there is where investigators started to dig, started to find body parts. So they had to dig up the whole garden, just found numerous bodies back there. And they had to excavate the whole area. I like this sign. It's this one. <laughs> it points to the other house. This other house is pretty cool though. I actually believe that they can't tear this house down because it has historical significance. A lot of cities like this, like Sacramento, will have ordinances where if you have a house of a certain age, you can't tear it down. But that's the reason it's still here because a lot of houses like this, they'll just demolish the whole thing when an infamous crime happens there. It's now a private residence 
and the owners have actually sort of embraced the history, although they're doing their best to show that the house wasn't at fault, and that it's just a beautiful old house. They have a sense of humor about it, though. There's a lot of funny stuff around the house, and a lot of places like this, they'll just kind of like lock it up tight and just put signs like, go away. They actually put some stuff honoring the victims. There's a link to a documentary that they have out on YouTube. It's such a cool little neighborhood where just a short walk away from the state capitol. All these houses are like beautiful historic houses. This place is popular. As we've been here, there's been at least, what, 10 people come yeah. by to see it? Yeah. Especially because there's a new Netflix show called Worst Roommate Ever, and the first episode is about her. They filmed ghost adventures here. So this place is well known, infamous. But I wonder, dude, if like the same neighbors still live here. Do they know this lady? Do they watch her go up and down into her house? Yeah. You know, like, that's crazy. Yeah. Investigators thought Dorothea probably didn't have anything to do with the murders when they first showed up here. Of course, she's a sweet old lady, right? So they let her go. She said she was gonna go around the corner to get a cup of coffee. She jumped in a cab and then eventually got on a train to LA. So the owners even embraced it by having like a mannequin of Dorothea up there. Makes it pretty creepy. I don't understand the Superman, but uh, it's cool, you know, he's giving you a little thumbs up. <laughs> I just realized he's flying out of the phone booth. You could, I think this plaque about the victims not just being victims is very important. I like that. I like a lot of their signs. Some of them are really morbid, but funny. So somewhere back there, she was dismembering bodies. Apparently when investigators went in, the whole floor stunk of decomposing bodies and human fluids. Just absolutely horrific. Pretty wild. Sir, I have never killed anybody. I couldn't drag a body any place. She played this game. She had, had this con where she was this sweet old lady. Never heard a fly. And then when the investigators came, she was acting all sweet. Oh, yeah, sure, right, you know? As soon as they started investigating, hopped on a train to Los Angeles. <laughs> <laughs> no matter the circumstances, I still try to have empathy and understanding and just analyze this stuff. So it's important to know that Dorothea, when she was a kid, she was abused. She went through a lot of trauma. She ended up in an orphanage. She had various husbands, kind of when she started her scams, apparently. But a lot of her husbands mistreated her and abused her as well. Not to excuse her actions, obviously, but they're part of the story. You got to have empathy for everybody. What do you think, Steve-O? It's trippy to think that someone went through all that and decides this is what I'm going to do. Like I can understand having trauma and everything, but what makes that person take that leap? Went from I'm taking advantage of people to like, I don't need them here anymore. Yeah. That's just nuts. Seems like to me like scamming people out of money, right? Like how much was she really going to get? She's still the old lady running a boarding house. Why don't you just do that? What was the money for? <laughs> Why do you need the money, you know? Yeah. Like, I, I understand scammers a little bit more when they take all the money and they buy, like, Ferraris and Lamborghinis. <laughs> but yeah. you're still the boarding house lady. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe part of that was she's, like, taking advantage of people like she got taken advantage of. Yeah. It's no, she wants power or something. Power of it, yeah. yeah. yeah that's exactly what that plaque says. It's crazy. It's such an interesting situation all the way around, dude. Government assistance isn't much. Yeah. You know? Crazy, this nice little street near the state capitol, all these beautiful houses. I had no idea the sweet old lady down the block was just dismembering people and burying them. It's so crazy. I think it's cool that they embrace the history as much as they can. There's no point in shying away from it. I like the keep out from under the grass sign. They definitely have a morbid sense of humor, but I like it. I do too. All right, Dorothea, see ya. at night how creepy this place can be. Dorothea Puente ended up dying in prison at the age of 82. These people that she pretended to care for deserved to be treated with respect and dignity. Instead, they were abused by a monster who most likely became a monster because of the abuse that she suffered. It's a vicious cycle. But a night just like this, back in that preparation room she had, chopping up her victims. The mannequin that they put up there is so creepy. Like, part of me is glad they did. I don't know why, I just, I like morbid curiosities, oddities. 
just can't understand how someone could be that evil and take advantage of people, take advantage of vulnerable people like that is just incredibly evil, unspeakably evil, it's wild. If there is an afterlife, she's definitely not in the good part of it. Yeah. I love true crime stuff, but I feel like a lot of times, like the sign implies, the victims actually kind of get lost in it, and we forget that there are real people, you know, it just becomes this like intriguing story that, that grabs us, but we forget the humanity, hopes and dreams of the people, and the, the feelings, and the family members that they had that loved them, and all the memories that disappeared when they were taken away. So for me, I don't forget the reality of this. As much as I love true crime stuff, I love the morbid stuff, I don't forget that these were real people. This isn't just a story, this isn't just a movie, it's not just a spectacle. Even though, you know, I show up here with a camera and stuff, I don't, I don't forget that perspective. If the story of these victims has bothered you like it bothered us, I recommend sending a donation to the Foundation Aiding the Elderly, a nonprofit from Sacramento that helps protect elderly patients in nursing homes and ensure that they receive the care and love that they need. You can find the link for fate.org in the description below. Remember, if you show up here, it is a private residence. Be respectful. Don't try to get in there or anything. Although I'd love to get a private tour someday. So, the owners, I talked to you earlier. If you see this video, you'd like to invite me in, please do. I did talk to the owner earlier, just very briefly. He was really nice. He said I wasn't bothering anything, so I appreciate that. And I told him I appreciate the signs, especially the ones dedicated to the victims, saying they're not just victims, they were people with hopes and dreams and all that. Beautiful sign. In the sadder episodes, I usually don't do a robot or the heel click, but I'm gonna throw one out there for the investigators, for the family members, for the people that stayed on top of her and finally got her caught, for the ones that did justice for their family members that were victims to Dorothea Puente. And remember, we have a Patreon. If you'd like to support the show, we got a bunch of bonus content, bonus episodes out there, lots of cool stuff behind the scenes, extra content, a little inside peek what we do around here. That's it for the boarding house of death here in Sacramento, California. Like, subscribe, share, do all the cool things cool kids do. Something or other tour for life. So be well, my friends. Take care of your loved ones. Be safe. Dude, we didn't even see the monkey in the tree. not because of this because of the music we heard guy i worked with just passed away at work i was one of his supervisors it was a crazy strange day he was a big warriors fan so go dubs we'll miss you marcus